What is up, YouTube, and welcome to Behind the Wall, presented by Perky Jerky. I'm Junior Nation 5788, and we got a hell of a show for you here tonight. Obviously, I'm here with my esteemed co counsel again, Thermite 917, Kane Junior 88. Missed the show last week, but is certainly happy to be back. Just before we get into it, I'd like to just say, first off, again, to these two guys for having a hell of an episode uh, last week, and, you know. I'm glad it got so many views and everybody really appreciated it, lol. But we are discussing the Kansas race weekend this evening and obviously we're going to go over some awards, look, check out some paint schemes, fantasy picks, you know, all sorts of knickknacks and paddywhacks. But it was a hell of a race weekend, I will say that uh, just right from the get-go. Both trucks and cup. First thing I'd like to say, last year's race sucked at Kansas. Disaster. I mean, just awful. Tonight's race was excellent. Yeah, I, I agree. Last year, the only thing that happened was, I guess, Denny Hamlin and Brad Keselowski spinning with Joey Logano. And, you know, this year, there was a ton of stuff happening. They tied the record of cautions tonight. Obviously, had that big wreck. I hope Eric Elmer is okay. I know we all agree on that. Um, and then in trucks, you know, probably just as much happened. There was great racing all around. And poor Ben Rhodes almost grabbed one there. Um, handed the win to stupid ass Kyle Bush. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's nothing worse than when Kyle wins the race that way, because it's like so close, man. You were go you were so happy for a minute, and then Kyle wins, and it just all goes down the drain. And I'm still kind of pissed about that one, but you know, it back to Cup. You know, good race overall. I wish Blaney had it, but you know, the second best guy won, I think. So. Um, I got no complaints, really. Yeah, neither do I. That was Both races were so fun to watch. Um, and then also congrats to Martin Truex Jr. on his first win at Kansas after what happened to him last year with the little screw getting caught between the wheel and the hub, and that cost him his first win at Kansas. I mean... A lot of people have been saying that this track owes him one, and well, tonight they finally finally got it done. So, big shout out to them. I mean, this is unofficially the home track for Furniture Row Racing, as it's closest to um, to Denver. It's really just right, a straight shot down I-70 from them, and oh, uh, I mean, it's 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 just fun. I mean, I, I obviously I wanted Blaney to win because you know because he's 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 such first of all he's. He's funny as hell. Him and Bubba, all the stuff they do on social media. I want. I was really hoping that Blaney would win just to see what the hell they had planned, because <laughs> obviously it would have been fucking fantastic. But hey, you know I can't complain about Trex. And um, each both guys deserve to to win tonight, and um, glad one of them did. Well, let's just be real. I think Blaney will win at some point. You know they've clearly got. They clearly got the speed, the pace, you know, they just need, they need a little bit of consistency, and I think they, like, they had it tonight. They just weren't quite good enough. Truex was better on the long runs, and that's kind of where he, you know, even though they didn't have an extremely long run to end the race, you know, due to the amount of cautions, but once Truex had that track position, and the tires were kind of worn in just enough, Blaney couldn't, he wasn't going to be able to get back in front of him. He just... They just they needed another set of tires, and I think Blaney could have given him a runner at the end, but it didn't happen, and that's fine. Uh, you know, I know he was a little disappointed to not even get second. I I completely agree. Like you know, I I hate second. I'm that type of person. I feel like if we're gonna get second, if that's all we're gonna get, I want to get second. And you know, he ended up getting fourth. I know it's only a difference of two positions, but. I get his point there. I understand his frustration. He wants to get everything that he can out of it, and uh, you know they'll get it. I and I, it could have been tonight. He did win the poll, so you know that's a cool little trinket. And then they'll take it, and um, I'm sure they'll get better from it. You know, going to another mile and a half track next, and there's a lot of people with a lot of speed at these type of places, including Martin Truex Jr. So he. Uh, you know, they did a good job tonight. A worthy guy won, so there's no really issues there. But just talking about going uh, back through the race, you know, there was many things that happened. Uh, one of the note factor, because he had an issue in segment one, and that was when uh, he decided to pull out of his pit box. 
after making a two-tire change and just absolutely whacked Michael McDowell. I don't know where the miscommunication was there, spotter-wise, but his night was totally just torched from that. And he ended up finishing, I believe, nine laps down in 28th, 29th, somewhere in that range. But shitty night. I mean, I thought, like, like you know, I thought there were several other drivers having bad luck, but damn, this what happened to Chase tonight is just... <laughs> I don't know what to say, man. That's I mean, I mean, you could say what you want about it, but that is the shittiest case of bad luck I have ever seen. And I just, and I just, as Chase says, you know, after every single one of his interviews, I mean, I just hate it for his guys, you know. Don't oversell it there, Kane. There, there's been plenty of bad luck things. <laughs> but it was a shitty one. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I know. I mean, that's just, that's terrible for uh, to pull out and next thing you know, just wax. Oh, oh, Michael McDowell and Michael McDowell, you know, can, continues on. He had, that motherfucker ended up finishing thirteenth. Wow. Like, yeah. But man, I just hate it. The arrow really gets affected when you get some damage, and it hampered. You know, it didn't hamper. It ended his night really prematurely. Uh, next thing, man. What's the next thing you want to talk about? Because, like we've already said, there's so much shit that happened. Uh, yeah, I mean. You know, back to Chase Elliott, just real quick. I mean, I just want to point out, Carl Long was better than him for a while. <laughs> oh, yes, Carl yeah. Long. We have to get a... We, we do have to give a nod to, to the legend making his first start since 2009. The car actually looked pretty cool, too. And he started off the weekend with a hell of a sponsor. Great job getting a weed business involved. That's pretty cool. And then NASCAR said, no, no, no. Get that shit out of here. We'll find the $250,000 and never come back, bitch. But... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Carl Long, eh, he kept kept the car in one piece, so good for him. But um, I guess the next thing we can talk about is Eric Jones spinning out three times. <laughs> yep, I was about to mention that. Yep. Eric Jones, he had quite a wild night. That was pretty cool. Um, I mean, he he made a great save on his own pretty early in the race, and then he spun a little later on in the speedy drive from the big wreck. And then Mr. Twisted T got into him late in the race. That wasn't his fault, but, you know, he did. He had the uh, hat trick there. So <laughs> he's a wheel man now. He made some good saves. So hopefully he can, you know, actually put some finishes together now. That is something about Eric Jones. Yeah, he hasn't been, he hasn't put together a lot of great finishes, but they've had, you know, better runs than what it shows. Oh, man. Jeez, uh, there's just so much. Like, I, I completely agree with you. Like, there's just so much going on. Uh, it happened. It, your mind is rattled. You want to cover it all, like, all at once. It was like, stage one. I don't know. I missed stage one, really. I don't really have anything to add other than I knew I knew the Chase Elliott thing, but we already covered that, so. Who even won that? Was that Truex? Kyle. 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 Oh, yeah, Kyle. You know, we were all worrying he was going to pull away with the win, but um, eventually he got a little too loose, or the handling went away, and he started falling back a little bit and never fully recovered. Yeah, them fucking yep. Goodyear tires. Pieces of shit. <laughs> Damn it, good year. <laughs> <laughs> he's switching to yeah. Hoosier. He's gonna. Yeah. He he won't stop till he's switching to Hoosier or Michelin or. Kyle probably punched the Michelin man, so that's probably not a good idea. You know, because he's a little rowdy. He's a rowdy little rascal. That Kyle Bush. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we've already lost that. I don't know what's going. Yeah, on. we we we're totally off the grid, but that that's cool. Um. You know what? Let's just fa let's just fast forward. I mean, we'll move on to the awkward uh, collision between Menard and Almendinger. Uh, uh, oh, I'm yeah. just gonna go ahead and blame it on Almendinger. You know why not? Because uh, after yeah. his dumbassness last week, causing the big one, he tried to cause a mini big one in the rear of the pack. You know, because that's where they're busy running. <laughs> and uh, thanks a, a lot to Fox as well for giving great camera angles. So, yeah. you know, that we could really dial in on what officially happened, but just an awkward collision there. Uh, but nobody cares. You know, they were basically battle, battling for 23rd. Uh, <laughs> Dale Jr. and his beautiful USA car had a, had a quite an awkward night up and down. That's for sure. And uh, finished with a down. Jimmy Johnson... Had a weird night, too. Night oh, yeah, that's right. It just it came to me. Jimmy Johnson had a nice little boner move there. Come off the wall and slams right into Kurt Busch. Cuts his own tire. I thought that was pretty funny. 
and Kurt yeah. feeling all bad about it too. That, uh, but that was unnecessary because you know Jimmy was just he was channeling in his his uh, inner Richmond and uh, slammed right into Kurt Busch. So that was cool. Yeah, it, it was cool because uh, <laughs> <laughs> they got into it a little later too. But yeah, uh, that's right. Fucking Kurt Busch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jimmy passed at least like a hundred cars, I think. He did. He really did pass a shitload of people, and uh, all to yeah. no avail because he still finished twenty fourth. So. <laughs> yeah. Because he said he passed ninety Jimmy. cars, and then he had the spin late in the race. So then he was probably he passed probably have ten more after that. So. <laughs> the car alone <laughs> doesn't count. So he finished. He finished twenty fourth. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> kind of a rough. Rough little race for him. Uh, just so many ups and downs, man. I just, I, I have to bring it back up. Like, Kansas was, I was not looking forward to this race. I thought it was going to be garbage. And it really wasn't. It was almost like a shit show and a half, but in a good way. <laughs> so. Yeah, I, I know, because, you know, aside from the cautions, I mean, I know it does kind of break the flow a little bit, but at least it provided some entertainment. But other than that, there were a ton of cars getting loose, and, you know, there was contact, and just great racing. Because I, I thought, you know, with the progressive banking, it would have been, you know, all top line, or you couldn't pass on the bottom or whatever. But it didn't seem to matter what line you were in. It was just, you know, you could really go anywhere that your car wanted to. No. Um, I mean, the, the restarts were pretty wild. There was obviously a lot of shuffling with track position, you know, and strategy, and people stayed out. <laughs> <laughs> that worked many times, uh, obviously. Yeah, totally worked. Yeah, just yeah. great strategic decisions there. Uh, the tires made it... The tires kind of forced the hand of a lot of people, you know, because they only have a limited number of sets. Some people had to stay out. Some people had to put on scuffs. It, you know, just... I, I think they've, like, limited them this year. So that's kind yeah. of thrown a little bit of a curveball in there. So obviously that, you know, added to the value of tonight's... Uh, craziness as far as track position shuffling goes but uh yeah i mean that's pretty much big wreck yeah yeah we're going that's exactly where i was going thank you thermite steer the steer the ship you know you fuck you're a beautiful <laughs> captain I, thank you. I don't know why i said that but you are uh <laughs> the big wreck wow and it was only three cars that involved but it was one of the most violent awkward crashes i, I think i've ever seen and we've seen a hell of a lot of them in NASCAR. But Joey Logano breaks a brake rotor, which is already random enough as it is, and just dead lefts into Danica, who dead rights head on into the wall going into turn one. They crash. Their collision is huge. Obviously, you'll be seeing it on the screen. And Eric Amarola, poor old Eric, just obviously got into some oil, could not slow down, and just hammers. Joey Logano and Danica Patrick, and just, obviously the immediate reaction was, holy hell, and then, oh shit, once Eric got there. <laughs> uh, yeah. Wow. Because then, by then you knew, you know, shit got real. <laughs> it did. Yeah. But I kind of wish they had another angle of, you know, Danica hitting the wall, because they only had it kind of behind them with the smoke and everything. And then other than that, they had a lot of angles of Elmerola piling in. But I wish they kind of had an angle from turn two so you could kind of see more clearly you know, how Danica hit. But, yeah. man, e either way, that was just enormous. I mean, even probably even bigger than Tal Talladega's big one just in terms of how hard people hit. I mean, Danica hit hard at Talladega, too. I mean, she's having it rough. And uh, She likes it rough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, rough, but, having it rough is like an understatement for Danica's season so far. I mean, let's be yeah. real here. Yeah, but then, you know, you could tell, you know, Elmer came to a stop. He put the window not down right away, and, you know, he could, you could tell he was in pain. And, uh, you know, I thought he was just going to catch his breath and get out of there. But then, you know, the safety crews were all gathering around, and, you know, then they said they were going to cut the roof off. So, you know, just really unfortunate for him, and I hope he's all right. We just still don't know at this point in the podcast what actually, you know, what his uh, injury is. But, you know, we hope he makes a good recovery and can race next week. That would obviously be the best thing, uh, you know, but it would definitely look very scary. And I, I hate, you know, speculating on anything, so we'll just hold off on that, I guess. Uh, yeah. You know, but uh, that happened. 
lengthy red flag, and then you know the race got back underway. And, you know, and plenty of crap happened after that. You know, uh, you know, Eric Jones spinning and lots of people going everywhere. Dale Jr. having vibrations left and right. You know, the Dale Jr. way. Uh, but yeah, I got to the end, and uh, you know, it was just the Blaney and Truex. You know, it definitely was going to come down between those two. There were, you know, there was a lot of things that could have happened. Uh, it could have went green to the end, and at a period it could have been uh, maybe perhaps in a fuel mileage race, but you know that obviously got uh, thrown out pretty quickly. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Martin Truex Jr. made some good moves, had a better long run car, got track position, and won the race. So yeah, I mean that that move he made on the restart on Blaney was really good because he pretty much put Blaney in a box because. Uh, Ryan Blaney had to block Truex when he went low, or else he was going to lose the lead that way. And I mean, maybe he could have pinned him down in turn one, but I don't know if that would have made much of a difference. And then Truex no. faked high and was able to just get the run from there. And uh, then we had a couple of cautions after that, and Blaney started, you know, falling back on his worn tires and being too loose. And yeah. then I know, Tyler, you were saying, you know, at this point, I hope there's a big one. And then there almost <laughs> was, because <laughs> Denny Hamlin made it three wide on a restart, and uh, Kurt Busch came down on him right into Jimmy Johnson, and it could have taken out a bunch of cars if Kurt yeah. Busch overcorrected and went back the other way. It was so close to a massive crash, so we could have saw another one. Uh, but somehow, they, it really wasn't that bad at all. Like it was like the mild one, really. Like it, yeah, it and you almost called it too. <laughs> I almost called it, yes, and uh, yeah. that would have been <laughs> amazingly horrific. So, but yeah, that's the race. Race ratings. What do we think? Uh, I'll start off. I'll... Eight and a half. I think it was a, a really just a really solid race. Funny, you know what? No, no. For a Kansas race, I'm so surprised. I give it a nine. See that? You see that? Right there. No bias. No bullshit. It was a nine. A lot of excitement. Good enough racing. Uh, yeah. Good job, Kansas. They, they, you guys put on a show. Yeah, I mean, I think, because I, mean, I, I wrote down eight, because I gave Taylor Dega eight and a half, and I was just trying to compare it to that, but, you know, just talking about it again, and, you know, reliving it, I think I might, you know, give it a nine as well, because, you know, for Kansas, like you said, in a mile and a half track, especially with all this, you know, downforce, you know, what to do with the cars and everything, I think this was just a, a really good race, there was so much happening all the time. Uh, really not a boring moment at all, same with the truck race, I'll factor that in too, because that was a wild one. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll give that a nine. I'm gonna have to agree with you guys. I'm definitely giving it a nine. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, the best that was... race this year. It is, and I think it's gonna show not just on here, but also on Twitter when uh, Jeff Gluck releases his poll. Was it a good race? Definitely. I think a lot of people are gonna agree with us on this. Yeah. Oh yeah, they should. I mean, if they if they don't think it was a good race, they're they're off their fucking nut. So. Yeah, uh, it's like with re with repaves, you know, it's kind of, you know, they're all on, you know, their toes for, you know, the first couple. And then it just kind of gets to a point where it's like, okay, this is how the track's going to be now. This is, you know, it just ended up being good racing. And I'm glad it's finally getting in that direction. So, yeah. like you said, good job, Kansas. Plus, what's even more surprising is that it was a night race. And typically, lately, night races haven't been that exciting. It's usually That's the race that are during the day. That, yeah, are, thought, that are exciting. I thought it was going to calm down after it got dark, but it yeah, really no. didn't. It got more intense, obvious, obviously. I mean, that really goes without saying, but, you know, needed to anyways. And that's a great point for Kane. Yeah, I completely agree. You know, night races yeah. uh, n normally aren't that great. But great weekend of racing, no doubt. Well, one of my favorite segments is back. It's been a quite a while, and where... Did Cody Coughlin finish? The trucks were back at Kansas, and big old Meatball was back racing again. He started 13th and finished 26th. Nick, what did Cody have to say about his race? Well, Cody said, We were definitely fast tonight. Unfortunately, something happened on a restart, and I just couldn't get out of second gear, like in Friends. <laughs> it's a shame, because I think... Because I think we had a really good Tundra tonight. My guys worked really hard to change the transmission. But we... Oh, yeah, the transmission. I forgot about that. <laughs> but we were good one. 
but we were mired so far back in the field that we just ended up using the rest of the race to learn some things for Charlotte. Learn. I think he uses like every race to learn some things because it's Cody Cosman. <laughs> but uh, so he learned some things for Charlotte and the rest of the mile and a half tracks this season because you need all the help you can get. <laughs> so, but I, I will say I was impressed that he avoided that one spin with his teammate there. Yeah, he did a he. Like, he didn't run a terrible race. Like, you know, we're obviously giving him a hard time and being a sarc sarcastic assholes because we can. But he didn't, like, for the brief moment that he was kind of a part of the race, he didn't do very bad. He just, they're just not as good, you know. Considering uh, one of the trucks from the stable should have won the race, you know, Cody Coughlin, those guys certainly don't have the speed that Rhodes or Crafton has. So, hell, even yeah. Endfinger. They're way behind the eight ball. But, uh, you know, He's Turkey Subs. up to Sub 14 some points. Hell yeah. Yep. Tur turkey Subs coming on. <laughs> Jags. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait oh, for it. because this be back. It is great to be back, and we'll be back next week, too. All right. Now time for some awards. I'm going to kick it off. With the boner of the week. And no, it doesn't go to one individual. That doesn't go to two people. It goes to the entire Hendrick organization. Holy Christ, what a night they had. Uh, well, I'm just going to make it short and sweet. We referenced the Chase Elliott thing how many times. You know, whacking Michael McDowell on pit road. That was, uh, you know, unfortunate. But at the same time, kind of a boner on his spotter's part. Uh, then Casey Kane actually had a pretty good run going, but they pissed it away. So, you know, ended up he ended up being the highest finishing Hendrick car at 15th. Then Dale Jr., the second highest finishing Hendrick car at 20th, had an up and down night. Could have had a solid potential top 10 result. Had problems with vibrations in the tires several different times. Also had a problem with the air gun. They had to switch to an alternate gun that... Uh, made the lug nuts a little bit tighter, and as a result, their stops were a little slower. So they, like, set the new NASCAR record for the most spots lost on pit road in one fucking race. And, uh, you know, even lost a lap late, too, due to, to a vibration. Jimmy Johnson obviously had his little skirmish with Kurt Busch two times. And uh, ended up spun out, severe tire problems, this and that, and finished 24th. So... The entirety of Hendrick was a big old boner this week. Next award. <laughs> Next award is good breaks, bro. And that goes to Joey, Lo yeah, Joey Logano for uh, causing that big wreck. It obviously wasn't intentional. But he sure went bowling in the Go Bowling 400 and uh, had a failed brake rotor. And it turned and left right into Danica. And Danica went hard into the wall. And Eric Almarola got collected. I don't have to go into detail because we already talked about it. But... That sucks. So <laughs> that's all I got to say about that. Kane, what is next? All right. Our next award is another classic uh, Jimmy Spencer award. And Eric Jones for spinning out not once, not twice, but three different times during tonight's race. You get the Straight Jacket Award because you must be freaking crazy if you think you could control a car that well three different times. I mean, there's no question you're a hell of a wheel man, but dang, son, you gotta learn to control that car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Came with a burst of energy right there, right on the scene. <laughs> yeah. That's how Spencer did it. Yes, he did. Very yeah. good job, Game. All right, next award is the Cigar Award. It's gonna go to two different people. I'll start off with the first one, and that goes to Ben Rhodes. Oh, my Lord. Mr. Heartbreaker the weekend. Heading for a heartbreak. You know, tune in to Def Leppard, kids. You don't... Oh, you don't know who that is? Okay, look him up. <laughs> Fuck me in the joke. Uh, no, it's true, though. Damn it. Nobody knows who the hell Def Leppard is. I love Def Leppard. Heading for a, bringing on a heartbreak. I'll plug in that song in the edit. Yeah, you do that. Bringing on a heartbreak. Ben Rhodes. Oh my lord. He, first of all, I normally call this guy a no talent ass clown. But I have said it for the last time as he proved me and a lot of people wrong that he could wield the fuck out of a truck. 
and he had that race completely won and the motor blows with seven laps to go ah but they he just did such a great job that it cannot go unnoticed and it won't so cigar award for ben rhodes all right and then our other cigar award for this evening well if you heard it tonight you obviously know it goes to mr ryan blaney man he should have won this race tonight he should have he won the second stage of the race he won his first career pole and if he had won tonight he would have been the first driver since like 1964 i think is what mike no Joyce said. yeah something like that to to win not only his first career pole but also his first career race in the same event but man, once again, he got passed late for the lead by Martin Truex, and then on the final restart, just fell all the way back to fourth. Great effort, you guys, and no question, he is going to be winning a race very soon. So, cigar for Blaney. All right. The next award. And now, now the next award is our uh, uh, Perky Jerky Classic. It's the Crying Cow, <laughs> and. Uh, you know, first of all, I just want to stress, I'm not, I don't want to make sport out of a bad situation. I hope Almirola's okay. But there was another driver in this wreck who didn't really go about, um, you know, her interview and everything the right way. And obviously I gave it away because I said her. So let's get right into it. Oh, Danica, you go to victory lane with Stenhouse last week, and now you finally won something yourself. But it <laughs> wasn't the race. It's a crying <laughs> out. You were in a huge crash. And what was the first thing you did? Did you check on the drivers to see if they were okay? No! You ran to Joey Logano to yell at him because you thought he intentionally got into you or something. I know it's heat of the moment, and I know you're Danica. You like to complain, but Jesus, calm down! And then, you had your usual weird-ass interview where you don't really have a train of thought. You just spit out whatever's in your head, which isn't that much. And the first thing you did was talk about how much bad luck you've had. I just don't understand, I think. I just don't understand why so much bad luck happens. Oh, boo-hoo, Danica! <laughs> At least you're <laughs> not in the hospital with a back injury! It's all about you, isn't it? How does Ricky live with you? He'll be, he'll be like, hey, honey, I made you some pancakes. It took forever and I burned my fingers. And Danica's like, I wanted waffles! <laughs> At least... <laughs> At least in the end, you expressed your concern, so good job there. But it took you long enough! I bitch! Guess when all you've... <laughs> bitch! <laughs> at, at least when... I guess when all you've done in your career is win a few of my race in Japan, you're going to be a little crabby. <laughs> you also had a good run going for once, and it got ruined. So I understand the frustration. But big picture, Danica, a driver got hurt in this wreck, and uh, the first thing you do... Is, you know, the first thing you're supposed to do is say, I hope he's okay. That's obviously what everyone else was thinking. You know, they got human emotions and stuff. I guess you missed that part. <laughs> but, uh, Danica! I mean, I, I guess a Wonder Woman scheme was appropriate this week because I wonder why you're still in NASCAR! <laughs> <laughs> you fucking... You won the episode. Oh. You won the episode right there. I, I can't... I can't say anything that's gonna top that. You just did it. Thanks. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that was brilliant! Holy shit. <laughs> Man, that was fun. Proud of you. Thank you. Proud of you! <laughs> well, so there's the crying towel. <laughs> Alright, uh, up next is uh, some paint schemes and the best ones of the week, so enjoy the montage.
Well, we don't have a worst paint scheme of the week. Uh, just wasn't enough shit out there, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I guess... I mean, Danica's Wonder Woman car was not terrific, but we're not going to shit on it. Uh, you know, it's it's not as we terrible. We already did that. As it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it already, she, got, she, it already got destroyed. <laughs> yeah, she, she did the work herself, so we don't need to uh, talk anymore about that. But we're going to go right into fantasy picks, and again, I come home with the fantasy victory after coming in dead last. I made the constant decision to choose Martin Truex Jr. for this week, and I was correct, getting 57 total points and the race win. That is excellent again, and I pull further away and extend my lead again. Kane comes home in second uh, by choosing Kevin Harvick, who accrued 38 points for him. Damani chose Denny Hamlin, and Denny Hamlin finished in 23rd, and so he only got 22 points. And, oh, thermite. <laughs> <laughs> he picked Joey Logano, and Joey got him two points. You're cool. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Can't do much yeah. worse than that. Yeah, oh, no, yeah. not much worse, you know. You would have been better off picking Carl Long. Just remember that. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, the all-star race is this week, and so we're going to switch up our fantasy rules a little bit. All, we're going to allow, uh, if you want to pick the same guy two weeks in a row, feel free to do that. We're also going to not award any other points and uh, to anyone but the winner. So... Here's how it'll work, real simple. If the whoever has the highest finish position, position will get 10 points. But if you choose the winning all-star driver, you get an additional 10 points. So that's 20 free bonus points up for grabs to go towards the points table. So, Nick, since you um, <clears throat> sucked ass with your pick, you get the first selection. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just remind me of that again, please. I will. You sucked ass with your pick. You could have picked Carl Long. I could have. But anyway, I think I'm going with a somewhat safe pick this week. Uh, it is Martin Truex Jr. Um, he completely dominated the Coke 600 last year. Uh, he won Kansas, another somewhat similar track. So I, I think he's got a good streak going. He's going to get the All-Star win for the first time. Fair enough. Kane, who was your pick? Uh, my pick is going to be Kyle Busch. This is definitely an atmosphere race for him. I mean, the announcers are always saying, oh, this is a Kyle Busch type race, you know, and they're not wrong. I mean, he usually thrives in these, con in these, you know, in these types of races, but, you know, maybe, maybe this year I'll finally do it. Fair enough. All right, well, I'm going to make my pick. Simple. Kyle Larson. He's going to get it done. After a badass win in the showdown last year, I think this is his type of atmosphere. He was close to potentially winning the all-star race last year. So I think it's time to hammer down. And uh, Kyle Larson wins the all-star. Well, that wraps it up for another episode of Behind the Wall. And uh, we hope you enjoyed listening. We had a, it was, you know, it has to be said again, a great weekend of racing, one of the best of the year thus far. And, uh, you know, for Kane Jr. 88, for Thermite 917, for Miss Bitchy in the 10, I'm Junior Nation 5788, and you've been Behind the Wall, presented by Perky Jerky. And thank you for listening. I'm gonna pep it up, you know. Yeah. I'm gonna rev this motherfucker and throw it in the gear. <laughs> that's what you. That's what you do. <laughs> that is. That is yeah. what you do. You know. It's like at the end of Pocono Pit Road. <laughs> you, you sure revved it up there. I revved it yeah. up and threw that fucker in the gear, and next thing I know, my ass was, you know, sliding on a banana. That that mm. didn't come out good at all. <laughs> oh Jesus Christ. Mm. Yeah, that totally didn't come out. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have to put that in the crying towel. Oh, jeez. <laughs> just, I mean, just instant. You just know it instantly. I mean, I'm a, I'm a 
fucking heterosexual sex machine, and that's not what I was going for. I mean, that, that's not, you know, like Damani. He's a... Yeah, what 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 we call it last night? The sausage, the sausage slayer. <laughs> sausage slayer. Yeah, he's a sausage slayer. <laughs> and you want to know the amazing like, uh, he he and I were in the FaceTime earlier that day. Mm -hmm. He made Jimmy Dean sausages. The foreshadowing was real. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> <laughs> he was sitting there talking about Jimmy Dean sausages being so good. I'm like, man, I don't even like sausage. So you said it. <laughs> He's a fucking sausage slayer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Damani, you'd put that on yourself. <laughs> Ty Dillon, yeah, help you out. Shut up. <laughs> I'm not done. <laughs> you shut your shit, there, mate. Don't forget, where did Cody Coughlin paint us? Oh my goodness! Oh, right. <laughs> yes! I <almost> forgot! <laughs> For the first time since April 1st... Yeah. Oh my it's God. time for... Where did Cody Coughlin finish? <laughs> yeah. Keep it in your pants, Kane. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what does Ricky see in her? He's a hole for his dick. A hole for his dick. <laughs> <laughs> Got a... Like that banana or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Oh, yeah, come, okay, now how many sponsor related, you know, dick jokes can we come up with for him? He went. He, he can go bowling. He can go like bowling. We did, like we did with. Yeah, he can go bowling. Because, <laughs> like, we did Ty Dillon. Oh, yeah. He throws it right down yeah. the lane. Yeah. He slides. In, in bed, he's fast and all. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, you know what they say. I mean, they don't call his dick Sunny D for nothing. <laughs> oh, that was That's an easy one. That's the fucking easiest yeah. thing. I know. Still funny. Yeah. You know Danica, she likes to go to bed with clean tea from Aspen Dental. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, even though even though all Ricky, all the, although the only thing Ricky wants to do to her in bed is you know give her a little hug. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see that coming. Yeah, I didn't see that coming either. I know, neither did I. I just that one's that was on the fly. You know, Danica's opening a new store. You know. She, she's opening is, is she? Ricky. She's she's opening her nature's bakery for Ricky, for Rickery. <laughs> <laughs> she's opening up that nature's bakery and letting. <laughs> you letting mean nature's know. nature's fuckery? Nature's na <laughs> yeah, sure. Nature's fuckery. Get some warm apple pie. Yeah. Mm. Fresh from the nature of the bakery. And then, and yep, then they'll and then they'll sue you. Yep. <laughs> So yeah, I'll, I'll save it now. So no more Danica jokes. Ah, oh, damn it. But, okay. But, but Danica, that's the joke. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know who I feel. I don't know who I feel more sorry for, Ricky or their dogs. Ooh. Mm. Ooh yeah. That's a tough one. I'm gonna go with their dogs. <laughs> yeah. Rick Ricky. Dallas and Ellie or whatever their you names really are. Know the, you know the names of their fucking dogs. Are you kidding me? I used under... to have the pet. I used to get the, the NASCAR pet calendar every year when I was younger, so. They just got that dog, didn't they? Like yeah, not too long ago. ago. Yeah, a couple when years you ago. Were, you when were you were younger. younger ago, but... When you were younger, yeah. right. Well, a couple. Mm hmm, mm hmm. When Where you were younger, you? like. Yeah, I remember the. I remember when I. God damn, Kane. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna fuck. I'm gonna. I'm gonna fucking literally kill you with the killers. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I was gonna sit there and say when you were yeah, when you were younger. Oh yeah, I remember when I was twenty twenty two last year. Yeah.